this is the Alicanta 120 watt quad folding panel. I'm really impressed. This might be my favorite. What up? This is I from Ascot Solar, where we like to keep solar simple. This is a quad fold ETFE 120 watt panel with some accessories that pretty much rival everything I've ever put my hands on. Open circuit voltage is about 23 to 25, they say. It also has seven amps in the short circuit current, but the real one is like 18 with 6.6 .6 amps, 18 volts with 6.6 .6 amps. It has a pretty long 5521 uh, cable. That's its base connection. Look how long this cable is. You can get some good range getting your device out of the sun with that kind of cable and you have the added benefit of it dead ending in 5521 and then it adapts out to these really cool cables one is a 5521 female as you can see here out to mc4 i'm going to use that in today's testing i hope and then the other one is a female to xt60 Anderson and another one. I'm gonna have to put it on the screen. I don't think it's eight millimeter. It looks like eight millimeter, but it might be 5525. Again, I'll put that down here. This panel is the most versatile panel I've ever put my hands on. Okay, very easy to set up. Quad fold panel. It only has two legs secured by Velcro. Just pop those out. And that's it. Comes out to be a pretty sturdy situation. ETFE panels are typically pretty rigid. See, it stands up pretty good over here. You can see that it has some leg reinforcements here. It stands up pretty sturdy. I mean, the right edge is a little floppy <laughs> because it only has two legs to support it. Pulling it in, super easy. Fold it up. Now, this panel does come with four carabiners also, instruction booklet. It has these little holes, as you can see, in the corners where you could hang it up. I've never hung a panel up by anything, but that's super useful and they include the carabiners. It's a nice touch. It's a typical touch, but it's a nice touch. The panel is IPX5 rated waterproof. Uh, we're typically used to IPS6. I would essentially say it could get rained on a little bit, but go and grab it. Um, that's my take. You could look up IPX5 and what that means. You definitely don't want to get the junction box wet. That's not a good look. Those ports are not protected in any way, <laughs> but typically how you set up a solar panel where it's laying at an angle, as you see here, you don't have to worry about rain kind of falling down on any sensitive parts. The panel itself that's exposed to the rain should be fine to get like a little, little splash, a little splash. They say it has up to 23% efficiency of these cells. I, I don't know how to equate that. We're just going to have to look at the watts <laughs> and see what kind of watt output we get when the sun is more banging over around here. I also forgot to mention that it does have a USB-C. It does have a USB-A quick charge port, as you can see here. USB-C is cool, 45 watts. I'm still looking for a panel that has 60 watts USB-C PD, but you know, 45 watts is cool, I'll take it. The handle is pretty cool, nice and comfy handle. It's not just a strap, it has this little rubber stuff kind of coating it, making it easier to carry around. It also has these uh, push to release clips right here, which are pretty cool. Velcro is easier to deploy, but I don't like Velcro. <laughs> so this is cool. The straps are even adjustable. So you can kind of snap them in and then pull them to tighten it up. As the panel gets more like worn out from being folded outward, you can always kind of fold this over, get it as close as you can, have this versatility to pull this up and then strap it down as much as you need to, which could help get it its form back, right? It's always a good touch when the bag for the cables opens all the way up because you need to be able to see this little junction box. It's always cool to put eyes on that. It also has a little indicator light in here <laughs> somewhere. I'm not sure what that's useful for, but if you're getting power, the indicator light will come on. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of quad fold panels, only in that bifolds are more easily deployed, but you can't beat this form factor in terms of traveling with it. A bifold panel <laughs> to carry around gives you less uh, thickness, but also gives you more area. Let's let's compare one. Give me a second. Here is the bifold big blue compared to the Alicanta 120. That's a 100 watt panel, 120. This has its benefits, but this has its benefits as well. The next thing we're gonna try and do is get some solar output readings. All right, we are doing a lay flat situation. These are the solar conditions. Bright, but 
clouds over. You can see about 57, 58. The sun's getting brighter. So it's sitting at about 60 watts. Now, if this is in Wi-Fi range, I can use the app. Let me see if I can get it in Wi-Fi range. One of the benefits to having this long cable, right? Right now we are at 77 and going up because it's getting hotter. Almost 80 watts for my 120 watt panel. 82. The sun's peeking through a little brighter right now. And that's just laying flat. Now that's not saying much because it is not winter. So the sun is overhead a large majority of the way. All right, I'm gonna make some adjustments here. See if I can get the best possible angle, but it's still a bright hazy day. Now I'd like to think I got this angle pretty good at this point. <laughs> I have to test it. Oh, okay. So it's, it's at different angles on different joints because that's pretty good, <laughs> but that is not. So what am I doing wrong here? Let's see if I can get this figured out. Get that a little more flat and this is some of the challenges you're seeing you know with it not having four legs which i'm not complaining about i only do this can stuff for you guys <laughs> i don't care about this stuff the power i get is the power i get i point it towards the sun and then i rock out and i leave it alone shift it every now and then but for the most part i don't mess around i haven't seen anything better than 80 but you know that's the cloud situation so even still 74 is what I'm getting. So on these kind of conditions, you can get about 80 watts. So here is some uh, overcast-ish <laughs> sun. And then what we got here is 32 watts. It ain't in focus, but it's 32 watts. That's what it looks like on the ground comparatively. This is pretty bright though. So 10% would be 12, 20% would be 24. It's getting about 30. So it's about 20% on an overcast, a feigned overcast day, which is, you know, about right. Now, one thing we can test while we're here is what happens when you put a blockage on the panel. Right now I'm sitting at 52. Let's go and put my carpet and be smacking racket on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens we're gonna lay it just right there okay 52 we got 52 right now with the joint on there let me stand in front of it and see if that changes anything Dude, this is impossible it says 33 right now my bad if y'all can't see it i'm gonna move to the middle the middle two panels now that's down to 20 right that's interesting so then we're gonna move over to the right i'm showing you where i'm at my bad and you see that it you jump back up to 32. all right let's see if i can hold that there and then move across the panel we're going back to the middle covering two panels went down to 17 and then we're just going to cover the two left went back up to 36 and then we're gonna move completely out of the way and it went back up to 60 now this thing is still on here so let's kick this out of the way see if I could get back in this uh, visual zone and then went up to 70 71 so I would say that these are wired probably in series here series there and then parallel but i don't know much about that y'all deduce what y'all make <laughs> jason always better at this than me all right sun just kicked it up a notch we're up to 91 on a 120 watt panel i'm glad i was able to get this footage from the uh joint you can see what the conditions are out there let's look at the sun and see what the sun's looking like yeah the sun is pretty much unimpeded right on the edge the precipice the cusp keep in mind that the fact that it doesn't come with MC4 by default is interesting, but not a bad choice. 5521 gives you a lot of options for smaller power stations, especially considering that this is a 120 watt panel. It's not a 200 watt panel, so it doesn't necessarily need eight millimeter. And they give you the 5521 to MC4. So all your bases are covered. I like MC4. 
but I like 5521 as well because I have a lot of power stations that use 5521. They're smaller ones, but they still work. This has really become one of my favorite panels to grab and deploy easily. It's a lot longer than what I'm used to, but it's still very compact compared to some other panels that I have. And it's important to consider that this panel is really competing on the budget level as it relates to the price. Typically, these folding panels can go for $2 a watt, but a lot of these panels are getting a lot cheaper as the, you know, the market becomes a little more saturated, becomes a little more competitive. And this is a nice quality built panel that hopefully will last for a good amount of time. Y'all know I'm going to use it. So we're going to see how it works out over time. But I'm, I'm really impressed with the Alicanta. Don't you want an Alicanta, right? <laughs> panel. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Ooh.